I'm going to show you how to create a two-sided ramp or a V-shaped ramp that this ball can roll into. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to just start with the game object, um, <clears throat> a 3D object cube. And I just want to make sure that the position on this, just to start, is zeroed out. So we're starting in the center. Okay, and I already have my ball also right over the center. And what I'm going to want to do is create this ramp that the ball will drop into and roll down. Okay, so let's just go ahead and um, rescale our cube to kind of look something like a side of a ramp. I mean, there's a few ways that we can we can actually put numbers into this scale menu in the inspector, or we can, um, if we hit our R key, so we have W for move and E for rotate and R for resize, we can pull these. So I'm pulling the size in the Z direction to make it longer, uh, Y direction to make it thicker, or thinner and uh, X direction. So we can customize the size of our uh, object that way. So I think that looks, uh, this looks pretty good for the side of a ramp. Okay, and I'm going to just apply a material. And this is a wood material that I just found online. So we want it to kind of look like a slab, uh, a wood plank. And that's, that's just, um, my aesthetic, I'm just trying to make mine look kind of like a piece of wood. Okay, so I'm also going to rename my cube and I'll call it ramp side one. And then what I'll do is I'm going to um, rotate it. So I want it to be rotate 45 degrees in the Z space. And I'm just going to type that into my um, inspector. All right. So that's how we've got it so far. Now let's go ahead and duplicate that. And pull that out. And now I'm going to, well, that first one was negative 45. This one I'm going to make 45. And let me go back and rename this. So let's make this ramp side two. Okay, and then I'm just going to, just by eye, I'm going to kind of join these together. positioning them so that they look like they're joined in the center. Okay, so one of the problems we have here is that if we want this to behave as a single object, um, that's kind of difficult because let's say we want to rotate this in the Z space. So we want it to be kind of um, We've got our ball up here. We want it to um, be tilted so that when the ball hits it, it rolls down. And if I go ahead and I rotate one of them, the other one's not going with it. Now I could select both by holding the shift key. I can select both in my hierarchy and that'll do the trick. <clears throat> but the problem with that is that if I want to, um, let's say I want to, um, add a hinge joint to it so that it, it kind of bounces a little bit when the ball hits it, then, then I would have to add a hinge to each board and that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't even know if that would work right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of, the idea is to group these together. Now that's something that uh, term group would be something I might use if I'm working in a 2D space like Adobe Illustrator, but in terms of 3D software, 
like Unity or Cinema 4D, we want to create um, <clears throat> something called an empty game object, just create empty. So I'm in the hierarchy on the little plus sign and I just hit create empty. And I'm going to go ahead and just name this um, ramp. Let's just call it ramp. And I'm going to grab my two sides and drag them into this empty game object so that they become uh, the children of that game object. So now we can think of the ramp as the parent and the um, each side as a child. So the ex for example, if I select one of these sides and I want to rotate that, I'm rotating that separately. But if I choose the empty game object, which is the parent of those uh, two ramp objects, and I rotate that, then both of the ramp objects that are placed inside of it as children are moving along with that. All right, so one of the things that I did is I rotated this. So let's get this, let's get this back to um, zero. So what I did is I rotated each ramp individually, each ramp side individually, and I want them to start out um, at X zero and Y zero in terms of rotation so that when I I want to rotate them based on the empty game object that they're embedded inside. All right, so let's select that, and, and then we can rotate this one. So they'll rotate together. All right, so why don't I rotate that like, um, it's like 30 degrees. That seems kind of okay. And then let's, let's go ahead and test. Let's bring this bring the ball down. Oops. Just so we can test this a little quicker. And we're going to move this out this way a little bit. Let's see. Okay, so let's let's preview this. Okay, so there it goes. Now I should have moved my camera in order to better better see what's going on. So let me go ahead and do that. Let's get a better view of it. All right, let's give it another try. Okay, so it's not exactly centered underneath the ball because I can see the ball hitting the, um, the one, the farther side of it. So let's move in here and take a look. I'm just going to move my, so I'm actually choosing this empty game object. Let's just move this slightly that way and try it out. Let's give it another go. There it goes. Okay, so let's say we want to add a hinge to this. Then let's go ahead and choose, um, we'll choose the empty game object that contains the ramp sides. And let's add a component. So I'm going to add hinge, hinge joint. And let's see what happens if I just Leave it at the default. All 
All right. But you can see that when I apply the hinge joint to the empty game object that the ramp sides are children of, that both of the ramp sides move along with, uh, uh, they move together. All right, so I'm going to make some adjustments to this. All right. So that's a little less, um, little less erratic. Okay. So again, if you want, if you want to apply a hinge joint to something like this, just experiment with the various settings to see how it will work and move the way you want it to move. So once you complete your ramp, you might want to make another one. So to make another one, you don't necessarily go to, have to go through the same process as you just did. You could just duplicate this current one. So go ahead and select the, the empty game object. Again, the parent of the two ramp sides, which are the children of that empty game object, and just choose duplicate. And then you can move that and position it, and you can change the rotation. So you can create a series of ramps for this ball to roll down. You can change the size of the ramp, the dimensions of the ramp. So you can make this one shorter, let's say. And let's just see what happens if we go ahead and hit um, preview and, and see what happens. Okay. So on this one, I still have my hinge joint, and what I really would like is rather than the ball uh, to roll down, hit this ramp, and roll off the right-hand edge, I'd like it to roll down the other way to the, to the left. So a couple things I can try is I can just try moving this over so that the ball hits at a different point. I can try different um, settings for the hinge joint. So let's just try some different settings here. Again, I'm just typing some in that I've already um, <clears throat> tried because it just takes a bit of experimentation to see how you'd like this, to see how it will work. Let's just see. Okay, there we go. 